All right, we back in the building with Dred Scott, second time around. Dred Scott, man, I appreciate you coming by, Big Cash Now on TV, and giving us some of your time. What's good? What's good, man? Good to see you, man. How you been living, man? How have you been going? I've been living good, man. Just trying to stay positive, keep doing something, trying to stay motivated. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we got the interview with you for the Campbells, you know, Last time we linked up, that you know, yeah. the video came out classic, man. We got to, you know, make some more new shit popping, you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, so let's get into the interview, man. Um, it's great to have you back, man, and, you know, with your upcoming album that I hear you working on, Dark Knight. Can you tell us more about the inspiration behind the album? Because I know you always got, like, a lot of dope, dope concepts behind the albums and music. And what can fans expect from it, Dark Knight? So... Two things, like this is probably like my loosest album I've ever done. Like, and what I mean by that, like, <clears throat> it's not so much focused on the concept. Like, it's one of them things where, like, if I have to add any concept to it, I'll probably say like it's like a crazy police chase. Like, and that's why <laughs> that's why I kind of called it the Dark Knight because um, the homie that um, I got kind of executive producing it. We've been talking about it before, and like. Like, one night, I was just talking to him, and I was like, you know, um, like, all the heroes are gone. And it was like, it was one of, like, it was a rhyme I had written prior to working on the album, where I say, uh, well, I kind of quote Jay-Z saying, Dark Knight hit feelings, some niggas die the hero, some niggas become villains. So, <laughs> so, like, I was kind of like, you know, I, I was basically trying to get him involved in the project and like come on come on OD let's save this let's save the city one last time you know what I'm saying so that's kind of like what it is like just imagine like Joker on the loose and Batman chasing him tearing up shit like that's so so it's you your man's your man is he on the album too he's not on it it's nothing but just me like mm -hmm. production wise just me he may help with like the mixing process and whatnot trying to get it shined up and polished just right but so far, is uh, I won't even say so far. I really don't feel like it's a need to put anybody on there. Maybe if I do a deluxe version, I'm gonna add some songs and some features, but mm -hmm. it's just me right now. So, your man really just doing like the executive part, like the, coming up with the visionary for you, helping yeah, you yeah, part. just helping me put the pieces together, you know, coaching me on like, okay, I like the verse, but the delivery was whack, do it again, like you know what I'm saying, like. And who is that? His name is uh, OD. It goes by Mix Mix by OD mm -hmm. on um, Instagram and whatnot. And sound like he's an engineer too. Yeah, yeah, he definitely is. <coughs> Dude, okay. So um, I know you mentioned to me, um, you know, during one of our conversations that you were thinking about changing your name. Yeah. Could you share the reasons behind the decision and? Give us a hint about, you know, what the, what the new name is that you're changing it to. So, I could tell you the new name, because, I mean, starting this new job and whatnot, I've been trying to get used to people calling me it, but tell people to call me uh, Snoop or Big Snoop, but uh, the new name is Snoopy Styles. Um, basically, the change up is just because, like, I've been doing the Dread Scott thing since, um, I want to say, like, 2014. Mm -hmm. And when I started the concept behind Dred Scott, it was, you know, for those who didn't pay attention in like history or government class, like Dred Scott, the original Dred Scott was a slave who, um, well, he wasn't a slave. He was actually a free man who went down south and got captured. And then he took the whole situation to court and basically they told him because since he was a slave, he shouldn't have been uh, in the courtroom in the first place, you know what I'm saying? But he was trying to fight for his freedom. And the uh, concept behind Andre Scott was like, like he was fighting for his freedom. I was fighting for like the freedom of my mind. But like since then, like, you know, life got a little better. My hair getting a little bit longer. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I'm fighting for that same freedom no more. Like, and not saying like I'm not fighting for anything or not tussling with anything, but it's just like, I feel good right now, you know what I'm saying? And I don't feel like I have the same mental blocks that I had as Red Scott. Well, I know, I, know I, I follow you on social media, man. It seems like you got a real, like, good girl behind you. Is that yeah. a good part of that? Yeah, it is. That's dope, man. It is. She's the love of my life. That's dope. 
Well, I, I know I, I follow you on social media, man. It seemed like you got a real, like, good girl behind you. Is, is that a yeah. part of that? Yeah, it is. That's dope, man. It is. She's the love of my life. That's dope. So, um, I see, too, that, you know, you know, you've been sending me some snippets of your new joints and everything. Mm -hmm. I see you kind of experiment with some new styles in your music. I mean, can you give us a glimpse into the new styles that you're going to be um, using on The Dark Knight and where those influences coming from? Um, it's... Some of the new styles is basically just more fast paced. Like, like with the Dread Scott branding, I kind of got caught up with, you know, like the down south, you know, slow down, chop and screw. You know, DJ Screw was a huge influence in my last project. Um, and I just want to do something more fast paced, more in your face, more, um, more just exciting. You know what I'm saying? Like, and nothing's wrong with like the slow down, chop and screw sound, but it gets to the point where people expect it from you or they expect you to do master P ad libs and stuff like that. Like, I felt like if I was to continue with that style 20 years from now, I'd be still doing the same thing. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's like people, what people don't get about me is that like, <coughs> I'm a true artist and like I reinvent myself. I try to reinvent myself if not every project, every two projects. And and I want to be able to, for, people, for my musical journey to be as exciting for me as it's exciting for my fans. Yeah. And I want them to feel like whenever they go out and get that new Snoopy Styles project, whether it's this one or one 20 years down the road, whether I'm, it's Snoopy Styles or some other crazy name I came up with at three o'clock in the morning. Like, yeah, I want people to uh, be able to feel like they're hearing something new and refreshing, but still have the same roots that from the older years, you know what I mean, so. Well, I think um, one of the dopest things that Hove ever said was um, he don't follow any guidelines because too many rappers ride mine, so I change styles every two months. Yeah. So it's good to innovate, and especially in the game of hip hop, man, and it's very fast paced. You want to be able to reinvent yourself. I think some people feel like on some levels, they don't understand artists like um, they want artists to do the same thing every time. Yeah. And they think it's kind of alienating if you do something different, but they don't understand the brain of artists. Like we want to do different shit and we yeah. want to keep it moving and we want to be able yeah. to do that. And I think the way Drake kind of explained it is like, you know, sometimes you got to be ahead of the curve. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like a lot of people won't get it first off. Like I feel like a lot of my fans. I mean, I feel like it's exciting enough. People should get it, but I'm still prepared for people not to get it first off. But then, like, I think over time, they're going to be like, damn. Like, he was really, like, changing some new shit. Like, he was really doing something that wasn't done by him. <coughs> Everything that's popping was some new shit at one point that made it was like, you know, that may not be it, but yeah. it was it. Yeah. Somebody just had a ball to do it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's, it's exciting to see you, you know, return to music after the little, you know, break you took, you know, I caught after, you know, the last time I know it was supposed to be your last album. But um, what made it motivated you to get back in the studio and how was your time away from rapping, you know, changed your creative process or impacted it in any way? Um, so I can say like what motivated me, for one, it was my girl, like she writes poems and shit like that. So like, seeing her process and how she goes from writing poems about her life and whatnot and and then the other thing is just like like Rose Gold was like a good album even the like, one after that was okay but like I didn't want that to like be the last gift I gave to the world so early on like coming to this project I was coming into it with it being the last album you know what I'm saying like just that last go but I think the more I got into creating it and just, you know, expanding on different ideas and and just, you know, not being so afraid to take risks that were outside of the box. Like, this is one of the first albums that I didn't use Splice in a long time. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm actually digging for samples and, you know, going back to older sounds and like, okay, how can I take that? from 19 so-and-so and then put it into 2023 with a new refresh style. You know, like that's, you know, I love this shit too much. And I think, I think that's the thing. Like 
I am, like I said before, like I'm a true artist, but I think even as an artist, sometimes you gotta take breaks and walk away from things. So when you come back to it, you have a fresh mind. And I do want to say, like, while, while we're on the subject, like, I do apologize for anybody that I may have lashed out on social media and whatnot. Like, I was stressed. And not just that, but I was feeling underappreciated as an artist. And I, I think because of, you know, you know, the big artists having PR teams and stuff like that and, you know, cleanup crews, you know, they can, you know, a lot of stuff you don't get wind of the stress that they go through with a lot of stuff. But me, I've always been a real person. Like I'm, I'm going to show you when I'm stressed, just like I'm going to show you when I'm happy on top of the world. You know, um, were I'm you, were you being attacked by the media. And I heard you mentioned PR. Were you being attacked <laughs> by the media? Or? No, I don't, I don't even have any PR. And that's what I, that's the reason why I was saying that because like, Let's say if somebody like Drake gets mad about something, you know, yeah, he yeah. asks people they can clean it up for him yeah. before the media ever gets to it. Whereas to me, like... It's big, it's big of you to, you know, step up and apologize. Yeah. Yeah, that's dope, man. Yeah. That's real dope. Well, man, we glad you're back, man. Yeah. Back making classics. So, um, beyond, you know, the album, Dark Knight, what are your big plans for the future of your music career? Because, you know, I sat with you and talked to you a couple of minutes before we started this, and mm -hmm. it seemed like you got the idea in your head that you know you 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 back and you want to do some real serious things in the future. You got a lot yeah. of plans. Are there? Um, can you tell us about those plans? Because I know you got them. And are there any collaborations or projects in the works that you can tease for us? You know, for your fans. Uh, right now, no collaborations. Um, not that I don't want to do collaborations. I think that's a part of the game, and that's something I do want to do. Um, I think right now my focus, like once we kind of get the Dark Knight ready to be rolled out, is live shows. Um, I know I say that every time, but I don't do enough live shows, and I feel like that's the way I can really connect with people because I'm not a social media person for real. Like, I mean, I show stuff on social media, but I feel like my real engagement will come from actually talking to people, meeting with people, and showing them who I am as a person. I'm just realizing that, you know, being out here doing this project and, you know, chasing rappers around and stuff, but I think that's 100% the best way to be connected with people is doing shows. Yeah. And, you know, even like, you know, just like the showcases. Mm -hmm. But if you can really catch the wave of some dope shows too, where you can open up for some artists and, mm -hmm. you know, that's a good idea. I mean, yeah. You can connect with fans, connect with other people that's doing the music that can help you in your journey, you know. Mm -hmm. and that's dope. I mean, and, and I, I can't wait to see that, man. I can't wait to record a couple of your performances, man. I know you're going to rip them because the music is crazy, man. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, man. If the promoters, you know, they want to link up with you, how can the promoters reach out to you to book you for shows? Uh, Instagram, Twitter. I'm on Instagram under um, at Big Snoop. Um, no, at underscore Big Snoop underscore. Um, I'm on Twitter at, at Dred Scott because I haven't changed it yet. Um, that's the best way is to link up with me. Um, like, I'm not going to put my number on camera, but my phone is always the best way to link up yeah. with me as well. And I know that the Instagram will get right to your phone. Yeah. Um, what about um, the Dark Knight? When can we, you got an exact date when we can expect to see that and check it out on Spotify? Uh, no date yet. I'm looking maybe early next year, maybe. Just some time, like, I want to kind of test out some of the songs, the crowds and whatnot. Like, that's where I want to kind of go with it first, you know, make some tweets. I got some songs on there that I definitely made just for crowd participation, you know. And I want to kind of um, see how that goes over with crowds and whatnot. But, um, like I said, early next year, maybe maybe June next year. If late and later, but not late, you know what I'm saying? Summertime. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think that will be a good time for it. Um, you know, I don't want to rush it. That's my biggest thing. You know, when it comes to my projects, I have a habit of, you know, like, okay, that's done, put it out. You know what I'm saying? I want to get in, I want to kind of, it's going to sound weird, but I want to get like into the habit of like being a snake, like just waiting for the perfect time yeah. to drop something. You know what I'm saying? Wait till it's the drought and flood it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's dope, man. And um, 
Um, any shout outs that you think you want to give or any anything you want to discuss before we head out? Um, I want to shout out Mix by OD. That's that's my nigga, hands down. Like he's got me out of so many creative boxes when it came to this project. Um, I want to shout out my mom, of course. Um, like without her, there would be no me, and I don't, I mean that farther than just her giving birth to me. Like like on the flip side of stuff that y'all don't see on social media, like she keeps me going and whatnot. And um. And last thing, I just want to give a shout out to my girl. You know what I'm saying? Like she's she's a breath of fresh air. When I just say that, like she bring she puts life into me. So, oh man, do me a favor, man. Tell them once again um, how they can find you, not just on Instagram but on YouTube and all of that. Uh, YouTube, just as of right now, YouTube. You can just search Dread Scott uh, D R E A D S K O T T. Uh, it should pop up with Dred Scott Topic, if you spell it that way. Uh, that's a good way. Um, um, Instagram, like I said, underscore uh, Big Snoop, underscore. Uh, Twitter is still at Dred Scott. Like I said, I'm kind of in the, in the middle of trying to change things over right now. But as of right now, you could, if you look hard enough, you can find me pretty much anywhere. You know what I mean? Well, I appreciate you, man, coming through and giving us some, some of your time, coming back for the second time and updating us. You know, we have to do this again in a couple months, maybe right before you do the album or right when yeah. you're about to drop it, touch base and, you know, see where you're at then. But I appreciate you, man. I love what you're doing, man. I want you to keep doing it, man. And you got my full support, man. Thank you, man. All right, man. We saw, we, we log it out with Dred Scott, now known as Big Snoop. Yeah. Appreciate you, bro. Thanks, man.